Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike. That's the YouTube yacht. You guys saw the thumbnail. Let's just jump right into it. Let's get to work. Get the ladder out of the old service Subaru. So the floor system is supposed to come in later today. We've got some work to do before it arrives. This is the YouTube yacht, like we mentioned. It is a steamboat shaped and themed rental cabin that we're building, complete with portholes. These will be around when they're finished out. Bow, of course. Stern area, paddle wheel up there, like so. Bathroom with corner jacuzzi tub, the whole nine yards. and out into the woods, because that's where boats go. So we're gonna take this laser, we're gonna make reference marks all the way around at the top, where the bottom of that ICF floor system is gonna sit. Now, whenever we did this bow, because of the way we cut everything so it has a little roll like a bell would, that means this section of wall here actually sits just a little lower than the rest of it. So that's why we're gonna take that laser all the way around and make sure we're perfectly level whenever we get the floor system sitting in there. It's also just always a good idea to use a laser to mark the bottom of the floor system because there could always be some variance in your concrete floor as well. We'll just go ahead and perch this laser in a precarious situation on top of a wall. The other thing I had to take into consideration, <laughs> I have magnets on the bottom of, of the floor apparently, pulled it right to it. Magnets on the bottom of my uh, camera, so I got a bunch of these shoved in the wall whenever we were pouring the concrete floor. Anyway, the other thing I want to take into consideration is the lumber we're using to support the bottom side of this ICF floor system. Because lumber is so expensive right now, we're obviously going to reuse it in the walls upstairs. So I gotta make sure however we form this up, we're setting ourselves up for success up top. Let's see here. Yeah. Yeah. We're looking for that steady tone. Slow beep is low, fast beep is high. Steady tone is what we want. Okay, let's make our marks. So we're all the way around, and what that does, like I said, it takes out any variance, whatever little minute differences there were from the floor or the ICF block or how the concrete was finished on top, none of that matters anymore. We're starting with a fresh elevation. Luckily, when I stripped the forms originally, I left all the screws on top. That's forward thinking. Forgetfulness or forward thinking. It's really your choice. Oh, yeah.
perfect. I mean, uh, yeah. The floor system came in three, four days ago, maybe. We'll take a more up close personal look at this, obviously, as we install it, but we're not quite ready to install it yet. And then the rest of my lumber package showed up yesterday. This gets incorporated into that. You'll see how all that works in just a minute, but uh, we gotta get everything else formed up and framed up and ready to receive this, which is, okay, it's that. It's light deck. So let's finish notching this and see if we can't get the rest of these up there. Here. Here. Oh, too far, geez. Too much gut. Aha. Yeah. I think that looks okay. A little bit of a gapage right there, but the way this all fits together, I think that'll work. Very cool. I mean, it just looks awesome. All the way up to the point of the bow, which is great. That means this step is done. Again, the whole reason we did this is to take out any variance on the top of that ICF so that we're laser level all the way around because the bottom of this floor system is the ceiling. So we want that to be perfectly flat too. Not only the floor on top, but the ceiling underneath. The next step that we have after that one, there's a spiral staircase right here, imaginary. 
It goes up to the main level and then up to the wheelhouse. And obviously we're not going to run the floor system across the opening so that we have to cut it out later. We don't want to do that. We'll form around it. We're going to form a square hole. I know spiral staircases are round, but it's a lot easier for me to come in later and frame out that, that circular opening than it is for me to cut out a bunch of concrete because I got the circular opening or the radius or diameter off just a little bit. So we're going to do a square hole nice and easy. Uh, yes. Yes. Let's see. Six foot in diameter. Spiral Staircase Company said two inches extra for the rough opening. Chalk line on the outside of this wall. We'll also get to see if my pipes are in the wall where they're supposed to be. Yeah, they look good. That one's in the wall. That one's in the wall. That's good. It's always nice when stuff is where it's supposed to be. So the YouTube yacht, this is a boat. Okay, it's a boat. Concrete will overhang the outside of the wall by about a foot. So I'm trying to figure out my spacing of where the opening for the spiral staircase needs to be. We'll have four inches for rail, 12 inches for the overhang, 12 inches for the ICF, 12 inches inside the wall. So that gives us a three foot walkway on the outside, four inches for the wall on the main level. And then we'll give ourselves six inches off of that. Outside the wall, outside the wall, the wall itself, 12, 16, okay, one foot 10 from the inside of the ICF. That's what we're going to do. There's a cut mark, cut mark right here, joint, right here. We'll mark it on that. We'll mark it, there's a cut right here. And concrete, we'll mark it on that and then I can hook to it. So one foot ten. And we're just gonna double check something here. Three foot. Four foot. We should have five foot across if we're square. Boom. Here, look at this. It's math. I know. It's super exciting. Some people like it. Really easy way to double check square. And this is what excites me because you always wonder how this all turned out. Anyway, three foot mark from that line. And then from here, a four foot mark. And if we're square, tilt. I can hold you on that line down there. And I can hold you. Oh, I gotta adjust it. You guys gotta be on this side to see the tape measure. Yeah, you can see. So if I hold it on that mark down there, we're good there. Swing over. Right there. Five foot and a sixteenth. So good enough. I think that'll be fine. And that's exciting because if we're square just by pulling off the walls, then in theory that means the walls are square. So we did something right at some point, and that's worth celebrating. Woo. Okay. So in the same way we were trying to take the variance out of the ICF by using the laser and putting that board up around the top, we want to take any variance out that this concrete might have in it as well. And the best way I know to do that 
get a measurement off this wall. And from up here, we'll pull a measurement. That 119. Hook that. I have a Sharpie and a pencil in my pocket. I keep grabbing the wrong one every time. Anyway, 119. Beautiful. Set a screw. A string line. I just do that every time. It's just simple, quick, and easy. That's all it is. You want a bird to be able to tight rope on it, you know? Okay. I'll measure up for each stud where it's at, and that way we get the exact height because there could be little variance in this floor. And I have my cut list off of wall one, my cut list off of wall three. I'll get those knocked out, get all put together. Now that we have those cut, I just wrote down a simple thing. You can see one, two, three, four. So that my studs are all marked. Wall three with the measurement. And I wrote all the measurements. And I wrote all the measurements on the ground where they go. That way I know where each stud goes on each wall and we can get this knocked out. It's always a little awkward standing walls up by yourself, but awkward is my home court. You know, it's where I thrive. So we'll be fine. I can't remember exactly. Well, that was loud. I can't remember exactly where this was, so I'm gonna stand it here for now. Stay. All right, that should work flawlessly. You just run the kicker like that. That's all you gotta do. Throw one screw in it. Start the second screw. Put it somewhere about where you're gonna be standing. And when you stand it out, it kicks itself out for you. It's like magic. Or common sense, really. It's, it's one of those two things. Hitting devices. So there you have it. That will be the stair opening. Right up through there. Panels, panels. We're doing it all. We're going to try to do it all in this video. Stand by as I do one of my least favorite things. Answer questions in the comment section that were directly answered in the video, but the person watching didn't pay attention. No, no worse than that. Oh, math. Yeah, we're going to do some math.
chalk some lines. Now in this section, we're laying everything off, not on 16 centers, but on one foot centers. And when we start putting the panels in, it'll all make sense. You'll just have to trust me for now. I'm gonna start right there. So it is the following morning. Uh, it's supposed to be light rain today, but that's okay. We'll work through it. We're pretty motivated. We've got just a little bit more to do down there, and then we're gonna start getting these panels installed. And I cannot wait, because once these are installed, we can walk out there and see what it's gonna look like. And I'll walk you through the floor plan oh, I missed for this level. I don't know how I missed that. It's only two feet away from me. These are all cut to go here, but we're not gonna put these in yet. I wanna leave this open so we have access to get everything in for the other shoring walls. There's two more walls, one here and one here that goes in place. So I wanna leave that open. What we are is we're framed over enough to where the panels could then catch the stair opening. So we can go ahead and start setting those across there. If I put these in, and I kind of block my access to that side. These are spaced on one foot, so they're a little tighter than your normal 16 inch. I just have these last four I gotta get in and then get that attached to there and we can start putting those panels on. Looks like we can probably just Do that and get us pretty close. That should work. So the next thing, confirm a few measurements here. We're gonna be 160 plus two and a half. 160 plus two and a half, 162 and a half. So this is called light deck. It is two foot wide. Yep, that's convenient. By 10 foot long. Confirmed. Should be eight inches thick. It is. And then on this piece, because we need a total of 162 and a half, that's 120. We'll cut a piece 42 and a half. I'll just keep this board over here as a straight edge for the top. And I'll use a speed square to mark the sides. So they recommended using a sawzall. You could also, when we did ICF, we've used hand saws before, they work really well. Uh, I just happened to have this handy this morning, so I figured might as well. Now we have the 
the full length that we need. Now, on each side of this, that side kind of has a groove, and that side kind of has a tongue. So you want to make sure you keep those the same. We take a little bit of spray foam. This is just great stuff, great stuff pro series. That's all it is. Oh. Okay. Oh. Let's just set these in there. Well, that was kind of magical. Probably I'll make sure the inline's upright. I am crowning these two, and I'm putting the crown, crown down now, but that would be crown up when we install. Just like you would a regular floor joist, I suppose. Making sure that joint's tight. And I've got these. These are just grip fast, very common. Inch and three quarter diameter plastic washer, like that. And it just goes on the screw, like that. Just run in with the impact. And that's gonna come up from the bottom. So I'm gonna put one in each end just to hold the boards in. Then we'll flip this thing over. So I just have two in each end. I don't have any in the seam yet, but hopefully that's enough to roll this together. I ended up chalking a line. You would think in the manufacturing process they could put, just like the new Dura has on where the studs are at, they could just put a line in the styrofoam so you would know where to put the screws. But I just chalked a line real quick, not too big of a deal. Double check the manual real quick and see how often we're supposed to put these. So on the manual it just says a screw on each end and the center of the panel. I think that's short enough we don't have to do one, but we'll just kind of eyeball the center of this one here. Get these. I'm thinking maybe coming in from the top side like this. Am I past that? Oh, yeah. Wow, easy peasy, buddy. A little bulky. And we'll slide that down to where it needs to be. So let's get four more of these done and kind of slid into place. Then we'll come down here and start getting these all fastened. I can't wait to see how this ends up looking. So the whole time we were getting those other ones all put together, it stopped raining completely. And as soon as we come down here and start to film so we can fasten all these, it starts raining again. But it's raining out there, not right here. Isn't that handy? You know, a few things are gonna start making sense to us here. One, you can see why I framed it the way I did and why I did that offset. It's so that those joists sit directly above, well, pretty much directly above each little stud there for whenever we pour. And then there will be another piece of wood that goes across here because when these get pressure on them, they'll want to wiggle and wobble and try to bow back and forth. So we will run a board wall to wall on that. 
And you can see why I did this L bracket with that lip like that. Now we can just run a screw right up into there, into that stud, to hold that down. Hopefully it's all kind of starting to make sense. I got to go on the outside and make sure everything lines up where it does. We'll fasten that one and just kind of get them all bumped over, get them all screwed down. So since we have this first panel where we want it, oh, the ladder's in the way. This is not the right ladder for the job. Not the right ladder for the job. Okay. Anyway, all we do is just run a screw up. Into that. Here we got her. We'll do the same thing on the opposite end, and then we'll kind of do some taps to close these gaps a little bit. And we'll run all the way down the line. So we've got these on. That's a full span. The next one's only go from this board to that board. So we'll do this skinny section, and we'll hop over and we'll do the skinny section on the other side of the stairs. And it's gonna get kind of fun up in the bow. 24 and a quarter. Is it the same on this end? Wouldn't that be neat? 24 and a quarter. Would you I'm now bud? Now listen. Just set that up as a quick little assembly line, but that went pretty quick. Let's see if we can get them in. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that just lovely? So this one will be a little bit different because we're going to have to notch this out for where it sits on the stairs. There's a two inch gap on that side. There's a two inch gap on that side. It'll all make sense when it's done, but the short version, this will get formed up, this will get formed up. There'll be a continuous beam that goes across here. This will get kind of carved out. So on this section, next to the stairs, we'll have a thicker concrete reinforced beam right there. That's the short version. It'll all make sense in the long run of every pour of the concrete. You'll go, oh yeah, now I see what he's saying. So I need to get this set secured from the bottom side with this all tied together. And then we kind of get to start that fun part. That's going to be a good time. Now we're into the angled section. So what I did, I measured this distance and I just slid two feet down the wall because that's how wide these are and measured that distance. Then I cut the panel full length. This is the long side, so it stays that length. This is the short side. So I just marked the center mark on the panel, and the center mark on that short piece which gives us the same inset on each end. And then now I'll just take the chainsaw and uh, buzz that angle on there. 
that's the simplest way I could think of to do that without making a bunch of trips up and down. We'll see if it works. think that'll work okay. This doesn't have to be perfect. It all gets covered in concrete and quite a bit of it. So as long as we're kind of getting close and not way out here in no man's land, I think that'll work. Let's do the next one. Do the next one different that's not working it's not really working the way i want it to we're starting to step in a little that one's still okay we're past the board i forgot to add the i know what i did to make that measurement wrong i measured two by four to two by four i forgot to add the thickness of the icf on there so we should be able to stick with that plan i just got to remember to add the five We're done for today. Let's take a quick tour. I ran out of two by sixes to finish that part up there, but plenty of floor system. We have five full pieces left and a couple partials. And I'll show you how much we have left, but you'll walk this way. Pipes are the wall for the bathroom. So this will be the bathroom area. Window to the outside world. Pond down there. This will be the staircase opening, but it will be open. You'll be able to see the spiral staircase. And this area here will be open as well. Some type of sitting, 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 seating, hangout area. Some games, a TV, maybe a fold out couch. I don't know, crazy stuff going on here. Then you'll climb up the spiral staircase. Hopefully they're not this steep. the upstairs. So it's 10 foot from there to the very tip of the bow. And we have five pieces left or two foot wide. If your math is good, that's 10 feet. After this piece, it is less than 10 feet from there to there and obviously only gets smaller. So like I said, plenty of floor system to finish out. I just gotta get some more two by sixes. Opening for the stairs. We'll put a railing up, don't worry. Pond see that beautiful all right so if you can't imagine the concrete will overhang that wall by a foot three foot walkway down both sides that dirt gets pulled back dock out to the parking area you with me kind of cool right on the very back end paddle wheel there'll be a staircase that goes up to a little deck area behind the wheelhouse wheelhouse also accessible through the spiral staircase. There'll be about a four foot wide walkway inside. And then in this area, this will be the little kitchenette right here. 
Again, the spiral staircase will be open, so it'll feel open. And this backside, big seating area. And when I say seating area, I mean big custom bench and a big custom table with plenty of, plenty of that gut room so it's comfortable all the way around with storage down in the seats for board games and things like that. So this is kind of like the hangout floor. The exterior wall will stop right about here. Remember, three foot walkway, three foot walkway. And then right here on the bow will be a little patio area. We'll probably put a couple chairs and a table looking off into that way. That's the west. That's where the sun sets. It's absolutely gorgeous when the sun sets through the trees. So you can check that out that way. Hopefully that's all making sense to you. I think it's awesome. And now that I'm up here, the first time standing up here on this potential, what will be the floor system, pretty awesome and I'm pretty excited about it. And I'm telling you with a little bit of tree trim and the river's there, you might just get you a glimpse. I'm kind of excited about that. Obviously we have a lot more work to do. There's still two more shoring walls that run down there and through there. There's the very obvious that the outside is not formed. That concrete's not staying in. That doesn't matter what slump you pour it. We'll talk about that in the future. There's a plan. There's an awesome plan. It's gonna look great. I cannot wait. I hope it works the way I want it to. And I know you're gonna have a lot of questions. What about this penetration? What about that penetration? What about this piece of formwork? What about this piece of support or shoring? I know there's lots of questions because there's still a lot to do. Best I can tell you, you can ask it, but if it wasn't in this video, I'm not going to answer it because you're just going to have to stay subscribed. Make sure your alert and notifications are on and stay tuned. The bummer part is we won't have enough money for the rest of the form work and all the rebar and steel work until the end of April. But there's a plan and we're excited about it. Next video, haul on more pipe. <laughs> okay, haul on more pipe for dirt. Perfect. Yep, round three. We'll see how that goes. It's been a disaster the other two times. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Appreciate you guys watching. As always, you know, as always, thanks. As always, thanks for watching. As always.